Well, there's a storm brewing in the Carnatic music world and singer T.M. Krishna is right at the center of this. After the renowned singers Ranjini and Gayatri announced that they would not perform at the Music Academy, a whole host of singers and musicians have made similar announcements. Trichud Brothers, the Priya Sisters, Dushyan Sridhar and Vishaka Hari are some of them. Chitravina Ravikiran has announced that he would return the Sangeeta Kalanidhi Award that has been given to him. Now, one more Carnatic music family has decided to return the Sangeeta Kalanidhi Award of their great forebear, the legendary Mridangam artist Palgat Mani Ayer's award will be returned to the Music Academy. Now, for those of you who are new to the music, uh, to the Carnatic music world, Palghat Mani Ayer, along with his contemporaries, Parani Subramaniam Pillai and Ramanathapuram, C.S. Murugabhupati, are very, very well known as the Holy Trinity of Mridangam. Mani Ayer was the first Mridangam, Mridangist to be awarded the Sangeeta Kalanadi uh, in 1966. And uh, he is also the recipient of the Padma Bhushan Award as well as the Sangeet Natak Academy Awards, which is presented by the government of India. Now, these are, of course, uh, you know, very, very um, exalted awards. They are great recognitions. And uh, for the family of uh, such a great uh, uh, musician to return an award like this says quite something about how it has affected and upset a lot of people in the Carnatic music world. Joining me now is uh, the grandson of Palgat Mani Ayer. This is uh, Palgat Ram Prasad. He is a Carnatic singer himself, a vocalist. Um, Mr. Ram Prasad, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you are returning, your family has decided to return the award, the first Sangeeta, uh, Sangeeta Kalanadi award given to your grandfather. Can you tell us why? Um, so the reason is pretty obvious. Uh, so the moment our family understood about the designate for this year, typically after my grandfather, Paul Gatmani Ayur, the ones who make decisions, especially related to music, is my peripa, my uncle, the oldest son of Paul Gatmani Ayur, Srikiya Rajamani, and then two other siblings of his. One is my father, Sri Palgatya Rajaram, and the mother of Nitya Sri Mahadevan, uh, Sri Matilalita Shivakumar. So they are the three who typically make joint decisions, which is you know typically helmed by my uncle, Sri Tia Rajamani. So when we heard about uh, the nomination for this, uh, this year's designate, um, the three of them had been in consultation, of course, along with Nitya Sri and myself. Uh, and instantly, uh, our family decided that this doesn't augur well to the personality of our grandfather, who believed in certain value systems, which perhaps did not align with uh, what we know of, of the present designate. And uh, the designate is also pretty open and vocal about it. Uh, so we were thinking of, uh, I mean, the instant reaction was after a few years, are we going to say that my grandfather was also holding the same award uh, with a person who was just holding a, a, you know, a viewpoint and a stance, which my grandfather did not believe in and scores of other people also don't believe in. Uh, that's where actually the mental contradiction came in, right? So we wanted to proceed step by step. So we gave it a day of thought. And uh, then my uncle, Sri Rajamani, he decided to write to the academy, Sri N. Murali, seeking an explanation. Uh, the two points he was uh, particularly worried about with respect to how the posterity of the award would be going, going, going forward was a couple of things. The first thing was, uh, it is well in the public domain as to how much the designate has uh, entered into slandering of uh, the past Sangeeta Kalanities too, uh, which can tarnish their you know, professional image. And uh, so my uncle had sought explanation as to whether these were went into consideration uh, because it is not only a disrepute to the artist, but also to the award and as much to the institution, of course, as, as, as far as the institution is concerned, they should be the most bothered not as. 
that being said that was the first point of uh, you know query that my uncle raised the second point was uh, the notice of the award uh, you know started reading that the designate would adhere to tradition right so if at all anything uh, we all know that uh, it has been a prime aim and the motive of the designate to if at all do anything approved those traditions which are typically followed not only on stage and off stage but i mean as far as this letter is concerned it was more about on stage right uh, so these were the two points which we sought explanation to and he was particularly harping on the fact uh, by he i met my uncle so on the second point uh, because i mean he has been in the concert field since 1940s and he has played to kiss shadow stage which with almost all of the sangeeta top sangeeta kalanis that we can think of starting from chembai ramanuja ingar right shamangudi cinema so here all of the brothers gn gn bala subramaniam rajamani kampillai right i mean like you can just name it it just goes on and on and on so given this background i mean he was of the opinion that people like him um who are perhaps the custodians in terms of the seniority of the profession they would definitely require an explanation as to what this line of adherence to tradition would mean because it is like saying i follow tradition but if i define tradition in a different way then that has a different connotation so these were the two points uh, which my uncle sought explanation to and did he get a uh, sorry did he get a response from the music academy not not until today so the first letter seeking an explanation was sent about 4 days back and uh, since we did not get any response uh, our plan was to actually send a follow up uh, you know email yesterday because this was pretty important and uh, because even in the presidential speech my grandfather himself has mentioned that the entire st- stakeholders starting from other institutions the artists the rasikas a lot of stakeholders look up to the academy to see what they do so that others can follow so they are in an extremely responsible position uh, in terms of making decisions because uh, the optics are such that they have great ramifications positive or negative and uh, so he quoted that too saying that you know what uh, if that is the case and that is a you know kind of importance that the entire stakeholder plays to what academy does and doesn't do then it becomes almost imperative on uh, the institution to come up with an explanation and especially to some senior artists like my uh, you know uncle i mean who has seen uh, imagine from 40 to 24 now it's it's been like more than 60 kids so he has seen a sea of changes so at least from that angle if not for the son or the family members of the first sangeeta kalanadi awardi at least for this sake i thought uh, i mean by i i mean our family members thought that we did own uh, i mean we did we uh, definitely they were own expectations so um okay, if can i ask um you were talking about uh, i mean you used a very interesting word tradition you know so um what exactly i mean you you know you've obviously been part of discussions within your family about this uh, whole issue now um mr t m krishna is entitled to his individual choices his individual opinions right and nobody is saying that he should not uh, follow the teachings of periyar or whoever he wants to that's entirely his uh, up to him so what exactly is the are people like you are families like you wh- what are you objecting to see more than an objection we genuinely sought an explanation like when i award something as prestigious as this award and i claim that the award is bestowed for a specific reason and if that reason is specifically which i as an award is working against it's extremely contradictory right what do you think so, is working against i'm just trying to understand like no uh, when you think about i mean let's start with a very simple fact when you say adherence to tradition when i say uh, let's let's give a small parallel right when i say this person wears a traditional attire would you expect that person to be wearing a two piece swimsuit absolutely not right so i mean now we have to become a bit more you know 
uh, the epistemologic in terms of defining then what tradition is in a conventional way within quotes. Tradition itself is a convention. So now we are pushed to a uh, pushed to us, uh, you know, a level where we have to give a prefix of conventional way of defining tradition. Because if you if you keep changing the goalpost of tradition from one end to the other, then obviously uh, it doesn't make sense to say what you're adhering to. So it can start from a simple fact of uh, uh, even the concept format, which which has which has been bestowed upon us. Uh, of course, there are so many contra arguments. That's that's besides the point. I mean, there is no one who says well, how the power concept. I mean, everyone knows that it's not that people are foolish to say that. I mean, suddenly only from 19, uh, you know, the early 20th century we got a format of. I mean, everybody is aware of everything. If you have access to information, even I have access to information. So let's not, uh, you know, play party fools here, right? So obviously we all know that. But when a person's uh, objective itself is to question what is conventionally defined as tradition and you say that that person adheres to tradition and therefore i'm bestowing this award uh, what would that even mean to the community of artists who actually try to hold up to the tradition right it's an insult to people who actually hold up to the tradition by the way if at all if at all of course since even till now the response doesn't define or give an explanation for the first two points because uh, the letter also you know alludes to the fact that they are not obligated to owe an explanation. Right. So uh, from that perspective, I'm telling you, uh, obviously, I'm not going to share the contents of the response because uh, it's in good faith that they have written personally to us. But I'm just telling uh, what the email alluded to. So most of it is uh, straight up from what we what the Academy has made as a public post in the recent times as to how the choice is. But we haven't gotten specific uh, you know, answers to the questions that we raised. Okay. Because they Fair didn't enough. feel the need to, they didn't feel the need to give an explanation. It appears to be pretty similar to the response that has been received by the singers Ranjini and Gayatri. Uh, they, uh, I think, uh, has yeah. come out into the public domain. So perhaps it's That's something. So, so most aspects of that is also sent to us. So I, it looks like a direct copy paste. Yeah. Okay. Appears. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, now, um, one of um, um, you know, I mean, let, there are there are two main um, points that uh, T M Krishna has consistently, you know, sought to bring up, and uh, I just wanted your uh, opinion, and by your opinion, I mean your family's opinion, because I'm pretty sure you have discussed this within the family. I'm, I'm sure everyone has, and me coming from a non-musical family, we have discussed it in the family, so. Um, one is um, the issue of uh, a particular caste, that is the Brahmin caste, appropriating Carnatic music as a whole, number one. And number two, about, uh, the, the, about the fact that, uh, you know, about his opinion that uh, there is no need for bhakti when it comes to Carnatic music. What are your views on this or your family's views on this? So, uh, I mean, I'm going to abstract from a personal view because it might be much stronger or much mighter than what we collectively decide. So I'm going to abstract myself out of this equation and give you a general explanation of how this also, because this fits into the second point that we raised about the traditional thing, right? Now, uh, it is common knowledge that if you're talking about caste barriers, um, I, would, I would like to approach it in several angles. The first thing is, um, if you look at the great doyans in Carnatic music, which several people belonging to the so-called upper caste alluded to in terms of their pure vidvat, two names come right up in front in terms of Liam, okay? The one person who took the entire, you know, uh, the music world by storm was Dakshinamurti Pralaya. So he was a Ganjira player predominantly, who was a Mudangam player by, you know, uh, by training. And... The other person who had the musical aspects which was lined up for people to fall at his feet was Rajaratnam Pillai. And what community does Pillai belong to? I'm not sure. Does it belong to the so-called upper caste community that the designate alludes to? I don't know. I mean, if, if at all there was really a barrier, then there would have been a concerted effort even those times. I mean, these times we have a lot of information. When information was asymmetric, in those times, I'm talking about 20s and 30s and 40s, where we had no channels for communication, I mean, as rampant as the what it is today. Obviously, you would expect that, uh, you know, people would team up 
and uh, probably they would they would show their disapproval even even though the content was pretty superior and we have several instances in several other fields uh, where uh, this kind of groupism did happen right and um, apart from you know dakshinamurthy pillai and uh, rajaratna pillai my grandfather's uh, idol in terms of uh, violin accompaniment was rajamanikam pillai pillai again okay. um about what about govin sami pillai what about naina pillai so naina pillai was um, an exponent of uh, you know vocal and in those times i am talking about early 30s when uh, patama mami pk patamal her father i mean think of this kind of a revolution in those times because the procession would start only after 9 9:30 pm right and imagine the plight of a girl child moving out of the house after 6 pm in a con- you know in a conservative family so dk patamal's father used to arrange for a cart right and have patama mommy sit inside the cart so that she get exposed to the music going around the entire procession where the nadasuram goes on and what kind of uh, you know openness are we talking about is this closeness right so as for, as far as there is content it doesn't really matter i mean nobody uh, you know gets into the question of what caste you belong to what creed you belong to the content is good the content is good that's all i mean entry barriers are there in any field and if you ask for exception then the burden of proof lies on you if you can tell me if you say that okay this this art form has a lot of restrictions then the burden of proof is on you to say follow this field until that if you can follow this kind of a template so that there is no you know entry entry barrier or exit barrier here so uh, it is i mean unless there is an agenda uh, which you are trying to build up in your narrative there is no need to even articulate because i mean i know these five fingers are not the same and assuming the five fingers are same are they going to be effective in their functionalities it is not going to be but establishing a supremacy out of the differences where we have an issue and we have never established in terms of any groupism that one you know uh, one caste is any different or any superior or any inferior and the three instances that i gave you all are pillays okay and the brahmins might not necessarily consider in a conventional way if you are looking up to the caste system or whatever the brahmins might not consider in those days i'm talking about pillays as upper castes they may not right so i mean where is uh, even historical facts don't really point out to the fact that despite having uh, you know a superior content some someone's talent was suppressed because he or she belonged to a different caste right okay fair enough now uh, the other point uh, that uh, i asked you about um, about devotion bhakti as part of the carnatic music tradition do you believe that to be the case or do you think uh, or or would krishna be right on this i mean uh, this is going to be tainted with a lot of my personal opinion because i as a professional i am going to have my own bias of so course, I'm, i'm not I'm asking, you for your, i'm asking you for your opinion yeah so i am i want to clarify that what i'm going to say now is necessarily not what we discuss in the family so this is purely my opinion as a performing artist who also teaches others and honestly speaking i myself have been performing since 1988 so it's going to be 36 years this august uh so from a reasonably um you know from from a longevity perspective i would i would say i would i can definitely say that i have a reasonable experience in seeing uh, a change uh and that change has not been necessitated necessitated in any way for a shift away from uh your involvement with your involvement aka bhakti right if you can delineate these two you have to be a yogi right you have to be someone who can who has the power of you know uh, distilling milk away from water right i mean i do understand that tunes can definitely captivate you right there are so many you know music numbers on mountains on rivers on trees or let's say on a flower vase right um if you ask me can they create the same impact as any other number that is based on god now the question is are we comparing apples to apples but if i am singing a song 
which praises a lot or describes a lot okay so let's say uh, arunachala nadam and sharanga it, uh, it it describes you know arunachaleshwarar so if i am saying that you know what i don't need to have bhakti but uh, i can ex- i can exploit the lyrical beauty of what mukuswami dikshitar has uh, you know tried to explain uh, well i mean it it's, it seems some it's it sounds slightly outlandish that's my position all right fair enough um and so well i just wanted to thank you for uh, uh, speaking up about this uh, i know it's difficult i know that the carnatic music industry is very small very closed and very um competitive to underestimate it a little <laughs> but uh, thank you very much for uh, speaking absolutely and uh, i mean as as clearly written in the you know uh, in the social media post uh, from our family it is with complete faith and complete intention good intentions that we are acting upon this because nobody more than my uncle sri rajamani knows uh, about the professional decisions of sri palgat mani here and there are recording instances where palgat mani here has relied upon the inputs from uh, my uncle sri rajamani so if he is convinced 100% that for what has unfolded in the recent past sri manier would have returned the award it is our duty as much as we bask in the glory of palgat manier's name in our family i feel it's imperative as a duty and responsibility to do whatever it takes to protect his honor and this is definitely in pursuit of that if he was alive he would have returned it on that note thank you very much uh, it's been a pleasure speaking with you thank you namaskar